Yeah. So, I mean, let's just focus on this very easily debunked claim for a moment that uh, we saw. And if we can throw it up on the screen again there, the CBC editorial, no CBC News did not retract its stories on convoy protest donations. So they say they stand by it. They say that, oh, it's misinformation that CBC walked back certain bits of coverage. They, they say especially it's referring to stories about foreign donations to the convoy protest that were being made by GoFundMe and Give, Send, Go, even though uh, we've had a number of financial experts and GoFundMe people and Give, Send, Go people that have testified before that parliamentary committee and others to say, no, 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 it's, it was the, the vast majority was Canadian. And there was also, though, this uh, report in Blacklock's reporter, CBC pulls false convoy story. And specifically this section, on February 10th, in a report about the protest convoy, CBC Radio's The World This Hour incorrectly said GoFundMe ended a fundraiser for the protesters over questionable donations to the group. No explanation was given. And they, there have been other examples as well where CBC has corrected this and they've changed this. They've made amendments to it. And they're still claiming, no, 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 we haven't. Just because we haven't hit the delete button on the story we haven't admitted that we got the facts fundamentally wrong. And, and one of them in particular that I think is interesting to point out here, and CBC stood by this one and shouldn't have, was its reporting on that guy, Martin Joseph Engelard, who was this, this grifter that said that his life savings were drained because of the convoy, when in actuality he was the one cashing out on it, and he was making money. And then when he went to the media, people sent him more money. And we presented CBC with hard and fast evidence that what they reported was wrong, and they said, no, 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 we stand by it. So CBC does have a track record. I mean, they did make a lot of key changes here, Harrison, but they also have a track record of doubling down when they really shouldn't. Well, yeah, and, and just to go back, uh, Andrew, to the statement by Brody Fellin, the editor-in-chief of CBC News. I mean, he can you, can you can not issue a retraction, and the story can still be false. CBC even admitted to Blacklocks that their radio program detailing these accusations of foreign donations and, and, and dangerous donations from around the world was false. So they said it was false. And you, can, you don't have to release a uh, write a retraction for the story to be actually false. And I think they're trying to play word games here and say, no, well, we stand by our reporting. We didn't retract our story. Well, fair enough. But you did admit to Blacklocks that your radio program parroting the exact same lines that, you had, that they had been talking about throughout the convoy protest to give the government some ammunition to uh, basically attack these protesters. Well, they said it was false. So it's, it's just one of those, one of those interesting, interesting word games by the CBC to say that, no, we're, we're standing by our journalism. We didn't retract anything. But then in March, actually, they admitted that what they wrote was false. So